cool and all, but um, it's time to ditch that stock speaker coming off that TV. It's a little bit annoying. I have all this, and I'm using the regular old speaker off the TV. Time to make some changes right now. I got two boxes of wires sitting here from what I pulled it apart from the last house. Now I gotta figure out what goes where. Fun times. All right, I'm gonna need some XLR cables and some speaker wire. Well, that's a pile of XLR cables right there. We got some 14 gauge OFC right here. I think that should be plenty thick for this.
Oh yeah, this is gonna be spectacular. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, this is just delightful. Let's see, one, two, three, two down, just uh, about eight more to go. So these stands here have a hole right here and a hole at the bottom of the pole. So I'm going to come straight up through the bottom. No one's ever even going to see that. But these stands over here do not have a hole on the bottom or the side. So I'm going to have to make some. I'll tie a little knot right here, which will go up inside the pole so it'll never get seen. But that'll prevent this from getting pulled down ever and yanking the speaker off the stand for some reason. On this one, there's no real way to come up through the bottom because this pipe has an insert that holds that bolt or the female side of that bolt, whatever that's threading into. So we're just gonna go at the bottom, come out at the top, can't come through here. So it'll at least be a little cleaner. But we're about to run another little wall plate right at the bottom because I need my HDMI's and my coax coming through to make it to this box. So we've already got outlets in the back, but I need another one at the bottom. So that's what we're doing today. And then hopefully all these wires from all the surround speakers are going to pop up right there. You're good to go. Clean. Right here, 
here, man. Let's see that thing. I know you like these ones. Oh, these are chunky. Yeah. Look all pimping. <laughs> Stay hunting. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to aim them in there. You try to grab them. Okay. That's more than enough. That's real nice right there. Cool. Snagging. There you go. I felt it. Take as much as you want, there's about 10 feet of slack. Okay, that, that one's tight, there you go. Okay, that one's good. Wait a minute, you got a little more on that one. There we go. A little more, a little more on that one. There we go, perfect, done. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> oh, so is that all I got? Yeah, one second. I've got you. Uh, That's more than plenty. Ready? Here we go. Play for me. Coo coo coo. Yeah. Look at it. Look at all that. Ooh. That's a lot of cables coming through there. We don't have enough room in that grommet. Yeah. Barely. It's a lot of cable for some damn home stereo speakers. Right. That don't even include the front ones. That's just the surrounds. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> All I have to do is identify each one of these wires, which speaker they go to, because I didn't mark them yet. Put some banana plugs on them and plug them in. Which one is that? Okay, so that is the right rear surround. Alright, we got all these identified, every single one of them. Now it's time to cut them to length, put some banana plugs on. Wires looking nice and clean. Oh, that'd be stupid. He's full. 
Now it's time to push this thing back where it was. And to get it all set up. So what is your answer? All right, all these wires are ran. Everything's looking good. Before I start doing any, any kind of tuning or anything like that, I'm gonna have to finish these ones up. We got some bows. The old owners left those there for me, which was real nice. All I really wanted was the wires though. So those got to go. It's not a bad little spot for the Clips Atmos speakers. Now eventually, as I get better at this, and as I get used to being in this house and I'm ready to cut holes in the ceiling, this is a really nice vaulted ceiling. I'll end up putting some Clips Atmos speakers in the actual ceiling. But right now, I'm gonna go with what I already had at the old house. They were amazing, they sounded great. I'm gonna put them as high as I can on this wall and on that spot I just showed you. Eventually, we'll do some in-ceiling stuff. But right now, we're just trying to get this thing working again and get it sounding awesome. But right now, 9.2.4. There you go. That's good. Thank you, bud. Wire's nice and clean. Can't even really see him.
been a long day. Everything's hooked up proper. No wires. No wires anywhere. With that out of the way, I got something else just showed up. Check this out. I might remember a couple videos back I talked about adding a 33 inch sub to this home system. I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna do that or not. I really want to, but you know how it is. I, I could go many directions. So with that being said, I'm gonna need to power whatever I decide to do. And I got this big empty open hole right over here. It's been bugging the crap out At of me. At the old house, I had an Xbox and I had a Wii in here and PlayStation and all that. But now they're in the game room downstairs. So I got this empty open hole right here. And I'm going to need some extra power for whatever sub I decide to use. And that's where those boxes are going to come into play. Let's open them. And just to spare you the details on that bottom box, because I guess you don't need to see me do this twice in a row, we're just gonna do this. And then there was two. Even though I'm not ready to fire these things up yet, because obviously I don't have the big subwoofer in the corner yet, I don't have a box or anything built for it yet, I still want to get them in there. I want to see what they look like. I want to get those little blue lines lit up. I want to get that hole covered up. Let's put them in so they could join their new brothers and sisters. Now I've got another power conditioner going above that one. It's going to be plugged into its own dedicated outlet. So there'll be three dedicated outlets behind here. We just haven't done that yet. And those will power those subwoofer amps when the time comes. Also, if I had to redo this all over again, I'd probably move the amps around in a different configuration. But everything's already put together before I decided to buy those two right there. So they're probably going to stay there. If it ends up having some sort of a heat problem, I will address it. I don't think I will. None of these amps really get too hot.
Should match the other one real nice. Especially considering it's the same exact one. Soon this thing will be getting its own dedicated outlet. There'll be three total back there, but it's not done yet. That'll be part of the next video. But right now, I just want to see it lit up and uh, there it is. Max is nice. And one last thing to do since this hole is bugging the crap out of me. That gap is driving me insane. Picked up a quick little CD player. I know I don't really listen to a lot of CDs anymore. Everything is streamed, but I own a couple thousand CDs, so there's no reason I shouldn't have at least a basic CD player Believe in here. Me, I know there's much more expensive CD players out there. This thing's like 400 bucks. I'm probably never even going to use it. Maybe once in a while, maybe if I dig an old CD out of the crates, something that I can't find on Spotify or Tidal, but it's a perfect spot. Pretty inexpensive. And I'm a big fan of this brand, so I know it'll be just fine. All right, one last thing I had to do before I start tuning. Went ahead and upgraded the center channel. This center channel is amazing. It's awesome. I love it. But we have a bigger living room. And um, I don't know. Just wanted to go a little bit bigger with it. Whether or not I needed it, I don't know. We'll find out. Now don't get me wrong, the one that I'm taking out of here ain't no bitch. It's a 600C. It's a nice center channel. I just wanted to do something a little bit more over the top. And I've been wanting one of these for a while. So let's go ahead and switch it out. See what it looks like. I guess I'm the only one that's going to know what it sounds like. You guys won't be able to tell out there through my camera. But I'll tell you if I can tell the difference. I know what that thing sounds like. This room isn't corrected yet either though. The receiver still thinks it's at my old house. So we haven't done any tuning yet. So I guess I would have to tune it to really know exactly whether or not I like it. But... I don't see why I wouldn't like it. I love what's already over there right now. So, time to do a little upgrade. Honestly, as strange as it sounds, it already sounds different just in this menu. I don't know why. It just does. Maybe just a little bit. Let's see. Look, I'm sorry. So like I said, I'm the only one that's going to be able to tell you guys if it sounds better or not. And I can't even say that until it gets EQ'd, until this room gets corrected. But it already sounds a little bit different, a little bit wider. The big woofer, that's going to be another story. That's coming up real soon. For those of you guys wondering about the old center channel, 
I don't think all is lost. I got an idea. Okay, so we got all this. We got all the wides, side wides, rear, all that. Now I'm thinking rear center channel. So 10.2.4, and if I add that subwoofer, I guess it would be 10.3.4. I have an extra channel available on that Audio Control X9. So I've dug a little bit around on the internet and I've talked to a few people. And right now I'm speaking to the engineers over at Audio Control. And we're going to try to see if we can make this rear center channel work. I know that I can make it make sound, but I really want it to be a true rear center channel if I'm going to do it. I'm not sure if I can pull it off, but we're going to try. So all hope is not lost for that thing right there. That thing was a chunk of change. It's not just going to go in the closet and sit there. Unless the rear center channel thing is going to be kind of like total nonsense. I hear that there's not going to be very much information in it. It might not be insanely awesome, but if it's legit and it's a real, true rear center channel, and it's actually playing what it's supposed to play and not some bullshit, then I'll leave it there. I'll get a nice stand for it. I'll put it over there, run the wire down through the floor like I did everything else, and uh, it'll just be cool to have. Hopefully we can give it the right information to where it's not bogus. So these are just thoughts. Just thoughts. And now, I believe it's time to hook up my Cat5 cable and start tuning this room a little bit. Alright, everything's working really good. Just listening to this without it being room corrected or tuned or anything, it's already awesome. 100% awesome. So I can't wait to hear what it sounds like when we get done with this. Right now I got the X9 on network cable. We're plugged into the back of my little mesh network we got here. And of course, the laptop is also on the mesh network, but over the air. And it's right over here. So let's pull up Dirac Live. So right now, before I get this started, you can see everything right here. There's all my speakers. Every one of them. Except for the subwoofers. The new subwoofers will not go in until I build the box and get that all working. So this is everything with those front speakers. No massive subwoofers yet. That's coming next. Alright, we're going to tell it that we're on a bigger couch. We got tightly focused imaging for a small area, medium, and wide. And this is a very large living room, so we're going to do wide. 17 measurements. Dang, it's going to take all day to do all this. It's okay though. So if you saw the last video where I set up my other living room, I showed this a little bit more I think and uh, well it's not going to be something that's going to be awesome for YouTube but every one of those dots is a microphone position and we're going to be sending some signals and listening and making modifications and all kinds of cool stuff here but it's going to take quite a while that's a lot of spots to test all right we're all set up to get started we're right in the middle get the mic right there right in the center position Let's take a listen to it.
Alright, time to move it over to the next spot. Looks like right above the person sitting on the right above his head. Something like that right there. Cool, 15 out of 17 down. It's gonna be a long night. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seventeen total. Let's keep it going. Looks like I gotta move it to this next spot right there. Alright, all the filters are all designed and everything's all the way it's supposed to be. We're gonna take a snapshot though. He's porting it over there to the X9. We should be good to go. Alright, system's all complete for now. It needs a little bit more tweaking here and there, but it sounds awesome. You know I want to add a little bit more bass to this thing, and that time's going to come real soon. I wish I could sit here and show you how good it sounds, but anything that I could possibly play, like what's behind me right now, that's copyright shit. That's going to get me popped. But take my word for it. It sounds awesome in here, and so far so good. It's really hard to describe the way this system sounds. You can turn the music up and up and up and up and there's no distortion at all. I turn it down because I'm afraid I'm gonna break something even though nothing's broken yet. But when it comes to watching a movie, it's I can't even describe it. Everything is just, everything is silent in here. No hissing, no floor noise, no static, nothing. And you hear these little tiny sounds coming from every direction. It's like someone knocks on the door over there and it sounds like someone's knocking on the door in our house. I don't even know how to describe it other than that. Thanks for joining me on this epic little journey and there's going to be more coming real soon. Thanks for watching, and I'm out of here.